So this is our problem statement. The solver that we'll be using is buoyant pimple foam, simulate the natural convection. And we'll, uh, as ma'am specified, we'll be selecting certain boundary conditions for this buoyancy driven flow. So what is our problem statement? We again have a rectangular geometry. We have one uh, bottom face, the left face is our flat plate, then we have a top face and the right face. Okay. So all of those faces, like bottom, right, and top, are at 300 Kelvin, and the flat plate is at 350 Kelvin. So we are giving a 50 Kelvin difference. Now we have to choose a boundary condition appropriately. Now, what we want to do over here is we want to mimic this profile that we are getting. This is a snapshot from Infrared. So here we should get a temperature at the wall that is high and it decreases inside the thermal boundary layer uh, and uh, our velocity, which will be zero at the wall. It will be maximum at the center and again starts to decrease till the edge of the boundary layer. Uh, this is what we should get. Our dimensions are, the box dimension is the bottom size is 10 centimeter and the height is 60 centimeter. Okay. So now uh, I will open the so I've extracted the, those data over here. So you have to extract this file, natural convection vertical plate. So when you extract that, you will get this. So it will be in two folders. So as yesterday, even Harish pointed it out, because it is zipped, it opens in two folders. So you open the first one, open the second. Inside this, when you have zero constant system, copy that folder. Copy that folder to your run directory. Now, to copy it, I have copied it. Now to go to my run directory, I am going to Ubuntu over here on the left. Left. I'm clicking over there. My run directory is in the home. Go to home. My user, open home and run. So inside this, I will, I will paste it. Okay. Now I, I already have, so I, I create one new folder for time being. You don't need to create that. Just paste the folder over there. Open your Ubuntu terminal. Has everyone done that? So can you explain again how the copy and paste can be yes. done? Yes, yes. So you have downloaded this, right? So it will be downloaded in some directory. I have downloaded it on the desktop and I have extracted it. Okay. It might be in the downloads directory for you. Go over there and extract it. When you open, there are a lot of files because I, we, have, we are doing two, three cases, right? So I have given everything. Now you have to extract the national convection vertical plate case. So you extract it. This folder will come. Inside this, there is another folder. So you copy this folder, natural convection vertical plate. Have you done till there? Yes, sir. Uh, so when you copy it, you have to paste it in your run directory. Right. So now I'm showing you how to browse the run directory in your Linux. Right. So in your file browser, in the left hand side, there'll be Linux over here, right? Inside that, there'll be your Ubuntu version in which you have installed open for. Click on that. The file structure inside Ubuntu will open up. You click on home. Inside home, your username, whatever is your username, that will show up. Open that. Then open the open form directory. Inside open form, again, your username. Then inside that run directory will be there. There you paste that. Okay, in your run directory. Once you okay. paste it over, once you paste it over there, then you will be ready. Uh, ready. You can run the simulation now. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay. So has has everyone done that? There is no run in my name folder. Okay. So uh, you might have you might have installed in some uh, some other directory. So this this uh, step that I told you, right? Where is your run directory? Hmm? So, okay. Uh, if you if you are not able to find run directory, do one thing. I'll give you another uh, hint. So you once you open your terminal, type run R U N, and then type explorer dot exe, and then dot. So directly wherever is your run directory, it will open that location. So see it opened and the path for me is whatever I told you, right? In Ubuntu home and then my username, then open form username and then run. So if you're unable to find your run directory, do this step. Okay. 
open your Ubuntu terminal, type run, and then type explorer.exe space and then dot. That will open your run folder in your file browser. You should be able to paste it. Just uh, see if you have copied it properly and paste it again. If not, try to do that. If you are still having some problem, then they may be, there may be some glitch. So asking for some administrator privileges. Okay. Then what you can do is try with the CP, CP command, CP minus R. Are you not able to paste it anywhere? Can you paste it in the home? Okay. Have you installed, is your open home installation in root by any chance or is this no, the no, same no. look? No. Excuse me, John. Yes. After opening the explorer.exe and where I can copy paste this my cab, uh, this file in your run folder. Okay. Your run folder, right? Paste it in the run folder. So when you paste it in the run folder, you should be able to see your natural convection cab vertical plate. So so for me it is available over here. Natural convection vertical plate. After that, you can open that folder by typing CD and then natural convection vertical plate. Okay. I just just press tab, it will complete it for you. Now inside this, we have a zero constant and system folder. Okay. Let me go and see what are the contents of zero folder. So in zero, right now I have P U P N P R G H. So we need to give boundary condition for all. So we'll just quickly go and see what are the boundary conditions. So let's start with uh, say PRGH. I'll open it with notepad. Mm Now here, if you look at the EPT over here, we have told you what are the appropriate boundary conditions, right? So for PRGH at the bottom, the appropriate boundary condition is the total pressure. As ma'am said, in such cases at the inlet, you should specify the total pressure hmm, where the flow starts. So there we are specifying total pressure of 1E5. That is what we have done over here. We have specified a total pressure, PRGH total pressure of 1E5. And at rest of the places, so if you, if you, uh, okay, this is one more trick. So whenever you see something written this way inside quotes, instead of writing, uh, the same boundary condition for all the files separately, we can write it together. Not all the files, all the patches separately. We can write it together by using this quotes. So that means whatever is this boundary condition, right? Specified over here, it will apply it to both to all top, right and flat plate. So this will save you from writing multiple things. Okay. And so what we are specifying PRGH uh, total pressure at the bottom and at the top right and the flat plate, we are specifying fixed flux pressure. So it will calculate pressure from the, uh, what you can say flux, right? What ma'am ma explained to you. And front and back, we are not solving. So that is empty. So these are, this is the content for your uh, PRGH file. Initially, we are giving uniform inlet, uh, inlet field, right? PRGH value of 1E5. So to open the uh, U file, you have to type notepad.exe and then U. Now in this, we are specifying an initial initial velocity. That is the internal field initially is zero throughout. The X, Y, Z component is zero throughout. Then at the bottom, we are specifying something called as pressure inlet outlet velocity. That means it will compute the velocity from the pressure. And this value is just a placeholder for the initial initial guess, something like that, right? At the top, we are giving an inlet outlet boundary condition. That means it will allow for if there is if there is a possibility of any uh, or you can say reverse flow, it will allow that. But we are specifying that the reverse flow velocity should be zero. Now, uh, these are the boundary conditions which we have found to be stable. The others are not working. So these these they do work. Now at the right, we are giving a zero gradient. That, is, that means it will compute from the internal cells. At the flat plate, it is no slip. No slip means zero velocity at the flat plate. 
then front and back as before it will be empty because we are not solving in that direction these boundary conditions also you can uh, find over here they are there in the over here we have mentioned so we have looked at the u boundary conditions the prj boundary conditions and lastly the temperature boundary condition so to look at the temperature boundary condition just do notepad.exe and e now for t initially throughout the temperature is 300 at the bottom again we are saying that whatever is the flow that is coming in should have a temperature of 300 okay at the flat plate we are giving a fixed value of 350 and top and right we are giving zero gradient that means it will compute the temperature from the internal cells and the front and back is empty so this is your uh, boundary condition for temperature now after this i think boundary that's it the boundary conditions now next let us look at what is the okay so my i have looked at the zero folder now let us look at the constant folder now in constant we have momentum transport g and thermophysical properties so if i i will open g file type notepad.exe and then g so if you see over here g value is specified so our g is in the negative y direction if you look at uh, this setup we are pointing in the uh, no, look don't look at this so our x is in the uh, what you can say along the bottom wall and y is around the flat plate so since it is vertical our g will be downwards so we have to specify g in the negative y direction so that's why g value we have written as in the second second uh, this value over here not in the first so g is in the negative y direction and that is 9.81 meter per second square so we need to specify g for this because uh, gravity is what is driving the flow because of density difference excuse yeah. me sir yes uh, sir can you please open the t property uh, file again i have to ask a question there yes yeah Yes, sir. Sir, in this, uh, the boundary field for the bottom uh, part, yes. We, yes. Have, we have given the inlet value of uniform 300. Yes. Then uh, why we have again given the value uniform 300 in the next? That is just a, that is just a syntax. It, it needs some, uh, what you can say, placeholder. Yes, okay. That is the syntax structure for the inlet outlet boundary condition. Like over here, see, uh, where was the other case? Uh, for some case, right, where value was not needed. I told you value is just a placeholder. So this is the structure that open form has. So whatever is the value for uh, inlet uh, is 300. And if there is any outflow, it will be by, uh, by the zero gradient. Okay, so that does not get calculated. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I showed you the G file. Now let me go and show you what else is there. So along with G file, we have something called as momentum transport. So in momentum transport, we have made the simulation as laminar. We are not running a, a turbulent simulation as of now. You all can explore that. So in momentum transport, to make the simulation as laminar, you have to just name the simulation type as laminar. So if you, if you name it as laminar, whatever is mentioned below that, it will not take, even if it is mentioned. If you remove this also, it's fine. Just write it as laminar. Next uh, is the thermophysical properties. Now, this is something that is uh, interesting. Yes. So, where are we going to specify the Business approximation, right? So, Business approximation will be specified here. So, here you have to specify what is your, uh, what you can say, what is your working fluid. So, our working fluid, we are saying it is a pure pure substance, pure mixture with constant tra transport properties. Okay. And uh, the equation of state that we'll be using is Business approximation and we will be solving for the internal energy. So that's why E, e constant E is the internal energy, sensible internal energy. Right. Now, what are the 
uh, what are the properties of this you will specify in the mixture over here so the molecular weight this is air so molecular weight is given as 28.9 then this is important right because for business ma'am said you need to give a reference density a reference temperature and a thermal expansion coefficient so uh, my row zero is my reference density at temperature t0 hmm? this is my reference temperature and beta that is a thermal expansion coefficient is 3e minus 3 that is this you calculate as 1 upon t generally for uh, ideal gas assumption right beta is approximately equal to 1 by t this you can calculate then some thermodynamics properties are needed uh, cv specific heated constant volume it may not use this for calculation but uh, see it will not use this for calculation it may not use this it may use some part of it but all of this has have to be specified if you don't specify then it will not work it will give you an error that say transport uh, transport mo model is not specified or species is not specified such errors it may give you so that's why you need to have all these values now uh, transport properties as you know viscosity and prandtl number is given so you have to specify over here and if you have to change any of these values then you know that you have to change it in the thermophysical properties so these are the two files now once we do that one more thing uh, so we have finished the zero constant and now we have to go to the system folder so i am doing cd system so in the system folder we have block mesh dict so block mesh dict is already edited it is just simple like a cavity case uh, i'll just maybe quickly show you that we can run it is like the cavity case here i have written convert to meters at 0.01 so that i can specify these values in centimeters so my x is uh, 10 cm and y is 60 cm and i have given some grading so this you can give uh, sir was talking about grading right so if i give this grading in the x direction that means my cells near the wall will be uh, finer and away from the wall will be coarser because i want to capture the boundary layer near the wall that's why i am giving a grading in the x direction once i run the block mesh command i will show you this but i think this sir has also showed to you now uh, the different boundary patches are bottom wall uh, bottom top front and left and right uh, these are my patches now next uh, okay i have also included something called as decompose part dict if the run time is more if you want to simulate for a longer time then you can decompose it a uh, one more important thing is that i have added something called as fp constraints okay this will come in handy for you this will come in handy for you when your simulation diverges so this is one trick what you can do is <clears throat> in certain cases if your uh, code is saying that you know you are getting negative temperatures it is not able to do that the first thing is to fix your boundary conditions then what you can do is you can add this constraint so what constraint i am adding i am limiting the temperature in all of the region to between 300 to 350 this is physical because your lowest temperature in the domain is 300 your highest temperature in the domain is 350 you cannot have a temperature higher than this or lower than this so while calculating suppose if your solver does not uh, what you can say predicts an incorrect temperature it will not allow it to go beyond this range so this fp constraint is very helpful if your solution is diverging so this we have added rest of the files are uh, are same so you don't need to uh, do that maybe if you want you can look at the fe schemes and fe solution as to what schemes have been used and what solution has been used uh, like gauss linear and all those things now to quickly run the simulation i need i am in the system folder so i need to be in my main folder so i am doing cd dot dot if i am in this folder i need to run block mesh first command is block mesh as soon as i run block mesh so you see my meshing is done i can view the results by typing parafoam let me do that's the result of foam and open this i am doing only to show you the mesh you don't need to do this okay 
So if you see, I am making my surface to surface with edges. If you see my mesh is finer near the wall and coarser away from the wall where I don't need it. So this is the effect of grading because I've said that my first, uh, first cell should be one fifth of my last cell because my, I've given a, uh, what you can say a ratio as five. That means my last cell is five times the first cell. So it will calculate that way. So if you look at this, I have a fine mesh near the wall and coarser mesh away. This is the effect of grading. So now once I have done block mesh, I need to run the, uh, I need to run the solver. So the solver is buoyant simple foam. So the command is buoyant, sorry, buoyant pimple foam. So make sure you type it correctly, the spelling. Viraj, Viraj has typed it in the chat already. So buoyant pimple foam. Once you run that, your simulation will start to run. It will take some time. Yes. Uh, where is this buoyant pimple foam solver allocated? Uh, boy, all these solvers are available in your solvers directory, right? In your run, as, as soon as you type SOL solve, you will get, get this. So this will be in your under your heat transfer section. Okay, so if I want to uh, add an equation, like let's say uh, if I ha have to add a term in the momentum equation, let's okay. say it's having a uh, some different kind of like a, a del T by del X something term. So yeah. can I add it there? Yeah, you can add it, uh, but you have to be careful when you are adding. You have to see where, you know, where else it is getting used, and you know you have to be. You can add it over there. You can copy that. Don't add. So adding a scalar is pretty simple, right? No, no, no. So you I'm, copy I'm not asking to add a, a, a like different equation, but I want hmm. to add a sim single term, so which ensures yes. like uh, some having uh, having a higher order term. Let's say del power four kind of thing. So I yes. need to add that term. So where can I add it? You you'll have to add it in your solver. You have to see how it is implemented first. Every solver is implemented dif differently. Okay, so the implementation will be much complex for those solvers. You have to see how it is being implemented, what you want to add. Okay. okay? And while adding, you also have to see, uh, make sure that your dimensions of your various equations are correct. Like you yeah. cannot just, like suppose in my equation, I cannot just add plus one or plus two. Yeah. Uh, if my source is there, I'm just giving an example, right? If some source is there. Like in, in, in my present case, the Laplacian case, where was it? Yes. Huh, yeah. So if you see this equation over here, your no, DDT. So let me like let me add here. Uh, instead of having uh, so if I have a term like plus beta in uh, del del cube t per uh, del x cube, let's say. Yes. Huh. So I want to add that term. That's it. Yes. Uh, so it, that is uh, like this having a Laplacian and DDT only. DDT is kind of a d represent del t by del t, and huh. uh, La Laplacian per del square on del x square right so if i yeah. have to add del 3 power del x cube let's say mm. so that term i how can i add it there ah that you have to figure out but one one uh, advice that i can give you is your uh, say this you see my first term right yeah, yeah. its unit is its unit will be kelvin per second yeah that i huh? you, this unit is kelvin per second this is also that's why this also has to be in kelvin per second yeah, so yeah. when you are adding that has to be there okay mm. Uh, because even in our case, we have tried to remove this source and instead of adding by FP models, add a source ourselves, you know, by defining some parameter. Maybe okay. you want uh, some constant to be defined. You can define that constant and that constant can be taken from your uh, thermophysical properties file. You know, you can look up, there is a uh, lookup function which will be there in your, so it you, you, you can't just uh, change it over here. You also have to change the create fields dictionary and all those things. Okay. So... Uh, it is not uh, a very straightforward process. So you'll have to try it okay, and see where you're getting error and then change accordingly. So the run is over. So again, I will type the touch result dot form. Explorer dot exe also you have to type, but for me it is open. After touch result dot form, please type explorer dot exe. Okay. So you see my simulation is run and I have all these files. Then I can open the result. Click on apply. I have I have to look at U or my T. Let's look at T first, temperature field. So temperature at the last instance is this. 
So you see a thermal uh, thermal boundary layer forming over here, right along the plate. Similarly, now if you want to see the velocity boundary layer, I'm changing it to you. There is a velocity boundary layer. Now this profile that you are getting, where is it here? So see here, you see a temperature that is decreasing from the wall till the boundary layer, and for velocity it is increasing midway and then dropping. If you want to plot that, you can do something called as plot over line. Like this, we have showed you already. So you have to plot what this is along your x-axis. So you have to plot along your x-axis and then apply. Now scroll down because it is showing you ma many things you are unable to see over here. So uncheck uh, things like P, uncheck PRGH uh, and say uncheck U magnitude. So this is your variation of T. So T at the wall is 350. And it is decreasing as we are moving away from the wall. So this is similar to what we have over here, here the wall and it decreases. Now let's look at U and uncheck T and look at U. So U from the wall, it increases, reaches one maximum and then again starts to decrease. So qualitatively, we are getting the same result. Okay. Now what you can do is. Yeah, in your D3, there is one more uh, one more case that is natural convection in a cavity. For that, we have a video. This is around 12 minute video. You can watch this video. So in that, uh, all the explanation about uh, setting up the business approximation, everything is given. Just watch this video and you can have this for your reference as well. So 12 minute video. Once you have finished that, you will get an understanding of how that case is set up. You just have to run the case that is available in the cavity convection. Hello, uh, Zon, can, can you please again uh, repeat the par, uh, para view part that you have uh, shown for the previous? Yes, sir. Okay. Once you do this, right, touch result.form, you need to open open the Hello, browser. If I, am, if I am using directly para view, di no, uh, no, then yeah, para form. it depends. This is touch result dot form is only for people for whom the Paraview is installed on Windows and you're opening through Windows. Yes. If you are using Linux or if you are uh, Ubuntu Paraview is working fine, then you just type paraform right, right, and, right, and it will right. open directly. Right. Okay. Now, once you open this, you have to click on apply. Then you can view the well, I say temperature profile by clicking on T and going to the last time step last frame so this is my this is how the thermal boundary layer will form now if you want to see how the thermal boundary layer is bearing along like in the direction uh, normal to your wall then you have to click on this plot over line function so this plot over line gives you the ability to see the variation now see by default see it is taking one point over here at the bottom most and the other in that opposite corner that is how it takes by default. So you will have to first change it. You want to plot along the x-axis, so click on x-axis and then click apply. Once you do that, you see there are many variables that have been plotted onto the same graph. So if you want to plot only T, come to the properties tab. In this, you scroll down, uncheck PRGH, uncheck U. So this is only your T. Okay, this is how your temperature will vary. Now if you want to see how your Velocity will vary. You can uncheck T and check only on U magnitude. So your U magnitude will be zero at the wall. It will increase and then again start to decrease. So this is what you should expect. Sir, can we okay. save that okay. picture? You. Yeah, yeah, you can. You can save the picture when you have that picture. Every any time if you want to save, you have to click on File, Save Screenshot or Save Data. When you do Save Screenshot, it will save the image. When you do save data, it will save whatever is that graph data in the CSV format. Okay, that, that means it will give you the value for every coordinate, XY coordinate. That is for every cell. I think that we have already demonstrated to you. It will be, it will be similar thing. There is no change in that process. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Huh. So now you all can go ahead and watch that video because that video will again take you around 12 minutes to watch. And maybe you can, you know, uh, simultaneously do it also. If somebody is having a problem, then I will demonstrate. Excuse me, John. Yes. 
uh, you said that uh, discretization process uh, uh, DDT uh, like where yeah. you write uh, uh, our yeah. equation. So yeah. can we see the discretization that is used for this uh, equations? Yeah. Like so I, I want to see the discretized equations. Where can I see? You want to, or you want to know how it is discretized? Yes. Yes. The, uh, we mentioned terms like DDT. What to do? Like Euler. Right? Yeah, so yeah. it will discretize by Euler technique. But so, how uh, it is done? So can we see that I like how it is discretized? For, formulation of Euler. Yeah, yeah. Just let me just let me check you. Just watch the video. I'll just see in the source code once. Okay. Yeah. So uh, if you want to share uh, search anything, okay. I will maybe show you all how to do that. So okay. this will be helpful. Okay. So first thing what you do is go and type maybe open form. Now, in this case, I am typing nine, whatever it is. Now we are using the uh, dot dot or dot or version, right? Dot org. Okay. So you open this first link, open form dot org, right? So this uh, this window will open up, right? This is their uh, website. So you can go to resources. Okay. And then you can go to the C plus plus source guide. Okay. So here you will get all the source code. Now, depending upon version, the source code has changed. So you okay. select the first appropriate version which in which you are working. So now okay. I'm working in nine, so I'm selecting nine. And then I can type this in the search. I can type some keyword, like say you want to know uh, framework for Euler. Okay. So once I search that, okay, then what are like how it is related, you know, where it is solving, it will give some some details about that, some small description of what it is. And if you want the source file, it is written over here. Dot okay. C dot H. When you open, when you click on that, it will give you the source code. Okay. This source code is available. See, this is the location in your SRC. That is source code, ODE, ODE solvers, Euler, and Euler dot C. Okay. So this is the location of where it is available in your system. Okay. So this is a quick way to see. So here it will tell you how it is solving exactly what it is doing. Okay. Then you can go over it. Okay. okay. Thank yeah. you. So Thank similarly, you. You, you can search for anything in the source code. Okay. Thank you. Yes, yeah, Sarvesh, if you want to see the uh, residuals, then you need to add the residuals, uh, one file named residuals in your, I think it is in your control dict and then in your uh, control dict file. Sorry, in your system folder, you have to add the residuals file and in your uh, Control dict, you need to add one command saying that you need to uh, log that residuals file. Mm -hmm. I think uh, that we have demo that Harish has demonstrated yesterday. Okay? Yeah. So, process is similar. You can add those residuals monitoring everything over here. You can monitor the temperature, uh, pressure. I think uh, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow we'll again demonstrate that to you once of how to monitor the stream tracer. So, all those functionalities, whatever you see, can be added into one tutorial, but then the tutorials keep getting lengthy and lengthy. So we are not showing all those things in every tutorial, but that is possible that all those functionalities can be added later on. What is the status? Has everyone uh, finished? So yeah, this is my day three. I will extract the cavity convection case. Inside that is my zero constant and system folder. I will copy that to my run directory. My run directory is already open. I'm copying it there. If you see cavity convection is copied, then from my terminal, I will go to cavity convection. Now here you have to run only two commands. One is block mesh and the other is uh, buoyant simple form. Rest of the explanation, whatever is uh, there, it is there in that video. Yes. John, uh, I have a doubt. Uh, exactly, I am facing this uh, problem. Previous time also I have faced that one when I am making a on zipping the file and I am pasting it on the wrong folder. Yeah. Uh, every time there's uh, in every file there is a some file is extending with a dot identifier or something. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that uh, if you extract with WinRAR, so even now, right, I was also facing that same problem. But if you extract with this WinRAR, that's okay. why when I extracted, I extracted with WinRAR. So you go to uh, click on it, extract. This uh, this default Windows extractor is creating those files. Okay, okay. okay, uh, okay. So when see it, now, if it is opening it in the normal one, it is not creating. When you are putting it on the run file, it is creating the program. Okay, maybe it is creating over there, but if you extract with WinRAR, then there is no problem. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Hmm, just you. that. So this is my temperature and uh, this is my velocity field, right? So you see some sort of a circulation that is happening inside that. Now, if you want to view this, what you can do is you can add a, uh, a, a stream tracer. Okay. You click on stream tracer and then scroll down. Now, instead of going for line source, you go for a yeah, yeah seat type. No, not seat type. Is that? Uh, yeah, let me go to okay. stream tracer, apply. Yeah. Here. Yeah, here. Yeah. So seat type, change it to point, right? And you see this sphere. You in when you increase the diameter of that sphere, say to something like one, it will cover your whole geometry. And then click apply. Now here, because I've added only hundred points, I can maybe maybe add say thousand points. And it will it will become more and more dense if I increase it to say ten thousand points. So here you can see the circulation. I can hide the there is an option of hide sphere, so you can see this. So this is how your flow will be moving inside. This you are visualizing, and you are, you see that there are two separate pockets forming at the two corners. Okay, so this is it. I think for uh, this session.